The Chinkers arrived a few days after the roof was finished, and they got started because our mason, Tim Tusek, took a couple days off from the fireplace to pour our basement floor. When the concrete dries, we'll be able to get the furnace in and start heating the cabin. One of the specialized jobs in building a log home is filling in the gaps between the logs, which is called chinking. And we have an expert from Michigan to tell us how this is done, Greg Numador. Greg's been chinking for eight years. Well, thanks for joining us, Greg. So what are you up to over here? Well, uh, basically what we're doing is applying first to close cell urethane foam in between the logs. Uh -huh. And uh, after this process, then we would spread a chinking compound over the surface of this. Okay. Well, what's the insulation value of this chink? Well, uh, each chink line gets two inches of this closed cell urethane foam, and uh, that has a good R value, but what really gives you the, the good thermal value is the airspace that's caused when you have the inside and exterior chinking in place. Oh, okay. There'll be an airspace in between the two, because the, the chinking adheres tightly to the logs and won't separate from the logs, then you end up with a dead airspace in between, which has a, a good thermal value and works like a thermos bottle or a thermal pane window would. Okay, sure, and you do this on the inside and outside? Exactly the same process on the inside, yes. Okay, well, I'll get out of your way and let you get out of there. Alrighty. Thanks. The back rod comes in several shapes and sizes to fill the log gaps. Greg's using trap rod, which is shaped like a trapezoid, narrow on one side and wide on the other. After the back is secured, Greg uses a mortar bag to squeeze out a bead of chinking wide enough to leave a finished strip a quarter to three-eighths of an inch deep. The flat surface of the backer rod helps ensure a uniform chinking depth along the joint. A great method is to empty the bag and then go back and trowel the beads of chinking. It's water-based, so misting with water helps smooth it out, especially with the weather near freezing, as it is here today. Wow, you're really making some progress. Looking great. Well, thank you. This chinking is a vast improvement over the mortar used in older log homes. Mortar would get hard and brittle, whereas this flexible synthetic can expand and contract with the shifting of the log home. So it always maintains a weather-tight seal. It's resistant to chemicals, salts, moisture, and mildew. And it also comes in several different colors, although we've kind of gone with a light, pale gray here to give us the rustic look of uh, mortar. Typically, Greg and his partner start at the top of a wall and work their way down. That's to avoid accidentally marring a finished line of chinking. And the manufacturer recommends immediately wiping off any chinking that falls in the wrong places. Dry chinking is pretty tough to remove. Cold weather can affect the application, so we set up a heater inside to help keep the chinking material workable. And Greg's thermal suit keeps him warm. One of the main structural elements on a log home are the purlins that run between the gable ends. They provide the main support for the roof above. But we want to cut out part of this one here because it's blocking our view looking out the dormer onto the front yard. And now the roof's finished, we're able to do that by bolting through this point right here and this point over here. That ties into triple rafters that run up on either side here in the roof. So we can cut out this part and it won't weaken the roof structure at all. You know, set there. Dr. Doyle cuts along with a chainsaw, first going right down the middle. Now we're taking it out in short pieces since a full log would be too heavy. It takes a little longer than cutting it out all at once, but this way we keep the job manageable. Uh, it definitely opens things up. Now all we have to do is get these small logs out of here, pull up some of our scrap plywood, and we can start putting down the subfloor. We've had a lot of nice weather this autumn as we've been working on the cabin, but this afternoon brings us another taste of winter. The snow shower is kind of a hassle for our chinkers, but they're hoping to wrap up here tomorrow, so they're pressing on to stay on schedule. We're going ahead now with the second story floor, which has to be built up for the heating, plumbing, and electrical rough -in. 
and our first step in all this was to level off all these log joists. To do that, we ran string lines over the tops of the joists to see how much they varied in relation to each other and to the first floor. Then with the hammer, we turned the screws on the floor jack supporting the second floor to adjust the height. We'll periodically check the level as the logs settle and adjust the jacks as needed. All right, well, with that done, we're all set to install our 2x6 tongue and groove flooring. It's made out of incense cedar, the same type of wood we used on the ceiling. And we're actually installing it face down, since it will be viewed from the first floor looking up between the log joists. And we're not concerned about the nail head showing, since this will all be covered by more framing and the finished floor. The ends of the boards slide right into the grooves cut into the logs during construction, and the grooves save us the work of scribing the end of each board to match the log. This subfloor is just the first layer of what we'll be building up here. Later on, we'll be installing 2 by 4 sleepers all the way across. We'll run all our heating, plumbing, and electrical between them, and then cover them all up with plywood. So basically, we're building a floor on top of a floor. Got that one where you want it? Yeah, if you could maybe help me down there on that end. Sure. This is one part of the job that Dean and I can handle alone. But nailing in all the boards does take a while. Somebody at the lodge said there's over 155 ton of field still in that player place. Are you kidding? No. Oh boy, imagine picking all the rock for that. <laughs> we won't have to worry about that one. See, we're going to have to hold off on these 2x4 sleepers for a while. What's up? Well, the plumber was over. He said we should take this 2x4 wall right here, turn that into a 2x8 wall. But so we can leave it in the same spot? Yep, it should stay in okay. the same spot. All right. And then you'll run all the heating and plumbing up through that to the second floor. And you want to run all of that before we put down the sleepers. Oh, so we just frame around his work. Yep, we just frame around that. Sure. And uh, then, I guess the other thing you want to change is that. 